In my last video, I had mentioned that you shouldn't be constantly tripping your GFCI outlets. And what I really meant by that was you really shouldn't be treating them like toys. These are a tool in your house to help keep you and your family safe. And I wanna explain a little bit in this video of maybe some things you should be doing and maybe giving you an indication of when your GFCI outlets are gonna wear out and what things cause them to wear out. So just a quick review of how a GFCI circuit works. You have your panel box, you have a hot wire coming over to your outlet, and then you have a neutral wire going back to your panel box. I did a video on GFCI outlets, and if you want a little bit more information, then maybe watch that video and it'll help you understand how this entire circuitry works. So right here, we have a circuit, but it's actually incomplete. We have voltage coming over to the GFCI outlet, but because there's nothing plugged into the outlet, the, the circuit is actually not complete. So to complete our circuit, let's say that we wanna make some toast. So we have our toaster here, and even though this is one wire, I'm just gonna draw it as individual wires. So now we have our toaster plugged into our GFCI outlet, but still the circuit isn't complete. We haven't put the bread in and pushed the button down. So right now, there's no current flowing through the circuit. But then we get our bread, put it in the toaster, and push the button down. Now the toaster begins to work. Now what happens is you have current flowing from the panel box to your GFCI outlet, through your hot wire, back through your neutral wire, and then back to your panel box. Now your circuit's actually complete and you're toasting your toast. Before we hit the button, all we had was voltage. There was a potential for current to flow through the circuit. But then once we push the button down, now we actually have a current. Now something's actually happening here. So what a GFCI outlet does is it measures the current between the hot side and the neutral side. And so let's just say that it's drawing two amps. So two amps worth of current is going through the circuit. So two amps is going through the hot, two amps is coming back, and the GFCI says, hey, everything's okay. So it just keeps powering and toasting your toast. But then you go to pick up your coffee and you realize you made it way too hot and you kind of drop it. And let's say some of your coffee spills on the toaster. So now this wet coffee has now become part of the circuit. So now you don't just have your two amps flowing around the circuit. Now some of that amperage has actually made it outside of the circuit. So what happens is this GFCI says, hey, wait a second, two amps are going through the hot side, but I'm not getting the two amps coming through the neutral side. Somebody might be dying, and then it trips. And this GFCI trips within a few hundredths of a second, so it's almost instantaneous. And this would work the same way if you had a blow dryer in a bathroom, and say you set it down and it got water somewhere, and current got outside of the circuit to where the current is no longer taking the path of the circuit, some of that current is actually getting out somewhere else. And so instead of somebody being shocked because they spilled coffee, or say they were using a blow dryer and it fell in, the, in a sink of water or something like that, now that current isn't gonna go shock somebody else, it's gonna hurry and trip, and now the circuit is dead. GFCI outlets are made to last anywhere between 10 and 25 years, but there are some things that can greatly reduce their life, that being moisture, and usage. And so these GFC outlets are made to be installed where there's moisture, potential moisture around. So that's outside receptacles, bathrooms, kitchens, and garages. And so with that moisture getting into the contacts and affecting the GFC outlet over time, it can cause the GFC outlet to fail sooner. And if you live in an area that's prone to power spikes in the power grid, these can actually fail faster. Actually about as soon as five years. So if you overload your circuits, that can also damage the GFC outlets. So if you have a space heater that's plugged in and it's drawing a lot of amperage or you have too many things plugged into the circuit, that can also potentially damage the GFC outlet. And if you saw my video where I wired my garage, you'll notice that I divided up a lot of the circuits. And so I have quite a few GFCI outlets throughout the building just to divide up the power demand. So as I said in my last video, I said you shouldn't be constantly tripping these because you never know what some crazy person out there might do. I don't want to give somebody the wrong impression. But these should be tested monthly. And these are pretty easy to test. Just has a test button, 
you hit the test button, and then you hit the reset button, and then the outlet should be live again. This is the tester that I use to test GFCI outlets if I'm testing the outlet somewhere other than the GFCI outlet itself. You're welcome Commercial Electric for the publicity here. I've used these in some of my other videos, but all they are is a tester that you can plug in and it has some codes so if the circuit is wired correctly, it'll show two yellow lights. If it's not wired correctly, there's just the codes up here that'll show which lights are lit up showing you what's wrong with the circuit. But what you can do is come over and hit this button and it'll also trip the GFCI. I wouldn't use these on the GFCI itself just because you want to see these buttons work. Where I would use this tester is in a place where your GFCI is powering other outlets that make these other outlets GFCI protected even though they're not GFCI outlets. So if you really wanted to get serious about testing these outlets, whether you just installed a circuit of outlets and you want to test it, or you're just trying to see if your GFCI outlet is functioning properly, if you look over here on the side, I have another tester that has the lights lit up. And then I'm gonna use my other tester to trip the GFCI at this outlet. And the reason this works is because I know that I'm the one that wired this. I know that these two are being protected by that GFCI outlet. So I can come over here and trip this outlet and it'll trip the GFCI over there. So I know the circuit's working properly and I know that that GFCI outlet is working properly. So as you start testing your GFCI outlets, you'll kind of get a feel for when you test and you reset, you'll kind of see how that works. And if your GFCI outlet is not resetting properly, then it might be time to replace it. And as I said, this GFCI outlet should trip within milliseconds. It should be hundreds of a second to where this thing trips out and doesn't allow any current to go anywhere and shock anybody. So if you're testing your GFCI outlet and it's taking a little longer, to trip, so you'll hit the test button and it's like eh, trip, and then you know it takes a little while. Figure that that time, that delay, is going to be how long this power is going to go some, somewhere else. And so, if there's any type of delay, if it's not almost instant that this GFCI outlet is tripping, then it's probably time to replace it. Just reading about a few instances of GFCI failures, there was a guy that said that it took about two to five seconds for the GFCI outlet to actually trip. And so if you figure two to five seconds, that's potentially two to five seconds of you getting shocked if you become part of this circuit. But these are installed in your house as a safety feature, just like you would have a smoke detector or a fire extinguisher. So you definitely wanna make sure that you're doing your due diligence to make sure these are working properly. It's about four sleeps until Santa Claus comes for Christmas 2024. It's super cold here in Western Pennsylvania, so I'm going inside. Thanks for watching.